The summer I turned 17, I, along with about a thousand other high school juniors from the state of California, were selected to represent our high school in a prestigious experiment in mock government known as Boy State. For those of you unfamiliar, an army of California's most ambitious walking cans of Axe body spray are shipped to Sacramento State where, fueled by hormones, hot pockets, and AP credits, it's basically like LARPing but for democracy. Each dorm building is a county. Each floor in those dorm buildings is a city and collectively all of them are a state. Each boy is expected to run for a political office. It's basically Lord of the Flies Ren Fair, but the winner gets a full scholarship to their dream college. It should also be noted that given there is literally no impact to any of the platforms that any of the candidates are running on, it is a massive and bizarre popularity contest which makes it an accurate portrayal of American politics. Of course, not everyone wants to play, and if you lost your election or just didn't feel like running in the first place, you have about a week of idle, marginally supervised time, and what could possibly go wrong? I, for one, didn't give a fuck about being king of Sac State. I ran for mayor of my dorm floor, and once elected, I proceeded to spend the rest of the week doing my preseason cross-country workouts shirtless around campus, hoping that some hot, goth college girl would notice me and want to spend a week hanging out with a 17-year-old straight-edge kid with frosted tips. Didn't work out. Shockingly, others were less productive. There was a pretty big and unfortunately friendly squirrel population around campus. Some of the boys would spend their free time playing with the squirrels. Now I know this sounds comedically deviant, but they would do things like steal Captain Crunch from the cafeteria and lure them into their dorm rooms. Lord knows what they would do with them in there. I noticed it and thought it was weird, but as it didn't affect me, there was no reason for me to intervene. My roommate, Peter, was less diplomatic, which was ironic given the circumstances, and he would yell, hey, stop fucking with the squirrels, to which they would laugh, call us gay, and proceed with fucking with the squirrels. As the week went on, so did the number of unelectable adolescent boys. Their behavior began to escalate and everyone watching knew something bad was probably going to happen but didn't really feel a need to intervene. Then one day, as we were leaving our dorm, we noticed the crowd was dead silent and then they would erupt in joyous laughter and then they would get really quiet again. We noticed that there was one boy in the middle with a baseball club. And what he was doing was luring the squirrel as close as he could get it. And when it got really close, he would yell at it and it would jump straight up in the air and he would take the glove and try and catch it. Just as we figured out what was going on, he lunged at the squirrel again and missed, but he hit it right in the middle of its back, immediately paralyzing the back half of its body. My roommate Peter was enraged and charged him, got right up in his face and said, what did you expect to happen? How are you gonna fix this? How are you gonna make it right? The kid was terrified. All anyone around could really notice was the squirrel writhing in pain, trying to army crawl away from us. Peter turned to the kid again and said, the squirrel is suffering and you need to end it. But it quickly became clear that it wasn't in him. He was too traumatized and freaked out to do anything. So Peter walked over to a trash can, pulled out a hefty bag, threw the squirrel's body in there, and started slamming it as hard as he could against a tree. And it was absolutely silent, except for the sound of dead weight wrapped in plastic repeatedly smashing against the spark and the subdued sobs of the kid who was responsible for it. This went on until the substance of the bag was completely still. Peter then handed the bag back to the kid and told him it was his responsibility now. Now I have never stopped thinking about this one. Partly because, yes, this was a very traumatizing experience for a young man to go through, but also because I saw something bad happening and I didn't do anything about it. In my head, if I wasn't the one hurting the squirrel, then I wasn't gonna be responsible for it that day. But what I learned is, because I didn't do anything to stop it, I'm a little bit responsible every single day since.